Isn't this fun? No. <laughs> oh, come on. This right. isn't fun before. <laughs> Everyone looks great, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so, Erica, just to catch you up. Um, <laughs> There, there was Wait, a, the poll hearing, right? Yeah. Poll hearing. Yeah, and there was a concern. We have um, Caroline Chase here, who actually lives at 161 Thompson Road. So we're just trying to sort of get to the bottom of whether or not you know we can go forward, or whether um, Mr. Williams needs to get an address. And Lori's about to join us on Zoom to answer those questions. <laughs> Going to be a good night when I saw one when I saw Twix at the top of the jar, but it turned out to be the only Twix. <laughs> you want me to run back to the office and get your No, it's okay. All right. I would smack a entitlement. <laughs> We're waiting for our town clerk to zoom in. She's oh. getting her laptop to join oh. us to answer. Because, you know, Jesse couldn't hear her on the phone, and it right. just made more sense for her to right. join right. On, the, on the Zoom. So. She's also the clerk for the assessors, and the yeah. assessors who is the one that issues the addresses. So she's, yeah. she's the one that we need to talk to in this instance. Well, it seems like he needs his own address for, for a lot of reasons. Yep. I mean, what if there were a fire there? So Jesse's i Jesse's iPhone. What's what's your name? What's your last name? I know it's not iPhone. <laughs> Martin. 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 Hi, Lori. Hi. So sorry, yeah, we couldn't really hear what you were saying about the um, the process of getting I, the address. Yeah, I believe as long as he has a driveway accessing the property with the intent to build that the assessors can assign him um, a street number. <laughs> okay, but until there's a driveway? There is a driveway. Oh, there is a oh driveway. you don't need, there isn't even a driveway there to is. the property yet? No, there is, there is. So there's a, a rough driveway, uh, a logging road, and we're building a, uh, a driveway, so a gravel driveway. Okay, um, the number is assigned based on the location of the driveway. So as long as you are, as long as you know exactly where that's going to be, then I don't see, I, I mean, I believe Lee could assign a number to it now. Um, okay. but, but again, the, the process for the poll hearing, it's, Got to be up to the, I mean, it's up to the select board ultimately whether you want to start the process over after a street number gets assigned. Well, I prefer not to, but to, but we're here tonight and there is no street number being assigned right now that I know of unless you have that sort of remote capability somewhere. Um, if we call Lee. Uh. Call them. All right. I will see if I can grab Lee. That would be a good story to the grandkids, though. We got our we got our new address at a through a third party phone call at a Zoom meeting. Hey, Lee. Um. Jesse, Je um, I'm not there. Jesse, in relation to the logging road, where is the gravel driveway going to be? It's being constructed now, so it's uh, exactly where the logging road was. Okay, did, Lee, did you hear that? I did hear that, but I don't know where the logging road is. But um, 
Yeah, it was approved by, by Ron Sweet uh, for the curb cut. Um, yeah. And I don't know what else. Um, I, we don't have an exact. I met Rome there at the town hall. Okay. If I take a run down to the town hall, I can probably do it up pretty quickly. Okay. All right. I'm going to in the shop because then you can show me exactly where it is. And I'm only about five minutes away. Is that, so that, okay? Is that okay for all you guys? Uh, just I, I didn't I didn't quite hear that. Okay, Lee said she can be there in just a couple of minutes and it, it's a five minute job for her to you can show her where it is and they, we all Okay, I'm I'm not there. Yeah, Jesse's not there. He's remote. Hey, where are you, Jesse? Je Jesse's at his home. I can take her. Oh. Yeah, I mean, it, if, if you go by, it'll be obvious, but if you need me there, we'll, we'll have to set up another time. Well, maybe you'll buy it tomorrow and do it then. And I need to talk to any delay. You know, I, I have to see where it is, and I have to measure. Because directory numbers and house numbers are based on... She's got GIS of stuff here, like software on the computer here. Could we say that you will approve pending... Yeah. The um, designation of a new street. That's center. a good idea. That's a fabulous idea. What's that? Perfect. Okay. They're going to approve pending designation of a new street number. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So you stay home. I'm going to hang up on you. <laughs> All right. I'll go out and get the exact location tomorrow and get your your number tomorrow. Get it to you. Perfect. Okay, and should I, Lori, should I call you? This is Lori I'm speaking to, right? Should I call yeah, you? I, have, I have Lee on my cell phone on speaker, and yeah, you're talking to me. <laughs> Lori. Okay. Hi. So um, let me know specifically what I should do next. Um, if I, you know, if I need to send you anything uh, or try to meet. I, I'm working this week. I really have no time to, to meet, unfortunately. Um, but what, what would you like for me to do? Or I do? But Jesse, if you're it just okay, Lee, Lee, okay. 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 All right, Lee, hold on one sec. Jesse, Lee said if the driveway's already been started, there's nothing you need to do. She'll be able to tell where it is and take her measurements and assign a number tomorrow. Okay, great. That's fantastic. So okay, just to be clear, Jesse, you got to hang on because we're still at the hearing. So okay, we're Lee, not I'm done. gonna let you go. <laughs> Thank you, Lee. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Lee and Lori. Thank you, Lee. And Lori. Thank you, Lee. Yeah. Wow, this is impressive. <laughs> Be before before I hang up, <laughs> um, I had sent out an email earlier today. The submittal addresses for the certification and the billing for the polls. The last time I sent anything to it, it came back as being no longer valid. So, and it wasn't, the addresses weren't included with this packet. So I need to get the submittal addresses for Eversource and Verizon to mail these certifications to, the approvals and certifications. Okay, I, I, um, I, did, I did see that email today and I, I was hoping that um, uh, Jennifer would respond. She, I think she dealt with that stuff. Um, I can look into that further tomorrow. I'll make some phone calls and I'll get that address back to you. Okay, that would be wonderful. Thank you so very much. All right, everybody have a good night. I'm leaving. You as well. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Lori. You're welcome. Bye. Thank you, Lori. Bye-bye. You're welcome. Welcome to Conway. Yeah, should right, right, right. Exactly. <laughs> Perfect. Should we, should we open the poll hearing? <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, um, welcome to the poll hearing, everybody, for 161 Thompson Road, although that was it is soon to be something else Thompson Road. Not that. Um, uh, so um, I declare this meeting uh, open. And um, so, Jesse Martin, you want to tell us what this is about for the record? Yeah, for the record, uh, we're installing a mid span pole between two existing poles to, um, to bring the, the span length of the standard or closer to it and um, help elevate the, the uh, cables that cross the driveway for the soon to be numbered uh, address on Thompson Road. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Got to go. <laughs> um, 
Um, yeah, so. Uh, so you guys, you guys got all the drawings, right? Do you guys have the drawing in front of you? Yeah, I've seen it. Okay, so we're installing one pole on uh, Mitch Van pole on, on Jesse's side of the road. And then in the future, when he does do his electric service, we'll need to support that um, pole from across the road from the cables pulling on it. And uh, so there, I believe there was one pole on that on his side and a stub pole we call on the other side to be able to support it. And that's about it. It's pretty straightforward. All right. So the, and I'm sorry, Jesse, what's your last name? Not Jesse iPhone, Jesse, <laughs> other Jesse. Uh, Williams. Williams, Williams, sorry. Sorry. Um, so just to clarify for the record, the, the, where we're at is the, the notice was set up in, um, for 161 Thompson Road, which is the street address of Carolyn, Caroline. Caroline um, Chase. Chase, okay. Um, the poll and the work being done is for Jesse Martin, um, who some time ago purchased some of Jesse, no, Jesse Williams. Jesse Williams. <laughs> yeah. Jesse, I um, uh, uh, yeah, uh, pur purchased a plot of land and is building a house there. So, and it, but it is right next to Carolyn Chase's property. So, um, the proposal that I'm going to make, just to explain it in advance, is going to be to approve the approve of the installation of the pole, pending the provision of the new and correct address um, and name, uh, uh, which will be done tomorrow, um, as stated by Lee Whitcomb, the Conway assessor, um, who was patched in through third-party phone call of Lori Lucier, the town clerk, and clerk to the assessor. Um, but that's genuine problem solving right there. I'll just add, I'll just add. Um, may, Jesse, Martin, may I ask you a question? Of course. Um, and the postcards that you all gave that went out to the abutters, it does say yeah. in, for permission to erect a line of poles and in parentheses install underground conduits and cables. So are you saying yeah. that's not? Mm -hmm. That's just a generic, just goes out, and they all go out just like that. Oh, okay. Okay. So it's, we're just Sorry. going by what's in the, in the actual um, drawing. Oh, it'll be over headlines. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Sure. All right. So, so Erica, have you been following along? With, with the school I have, yes. <laughs> wow. and I That's totally good, appreciate your, yeah, I, I I've followed all of it. So I kind of, I kind of lost myself, I kind of lost myself in myself, so. Um, <laughs> no, that was a good, uh, you did a good job. All right, all right. Um, so, uh, um, so I'm going to make a motion then to tentatively approve the pole construction for Jesse Williams um, at what was formerly known as 161 Thompson Road for Jesse's purpose, but which is still known as 161 Thompson Road for Caroline Chase's purpose. Um, <laughs> so pending uh, pending the assignment of, of a new uh, address, new number by me yes. tomorrow. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you know, poor Adam's got to convert that into minutes. I'm sorry. I got it. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I, I have full faith in Adam. I second yeah. that motion. <laughs> all right, all right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So that would be unanimous, of, and that is a quorum, and that is the pending. So we're done. <laughs> so we're done. And um, thank you, everybody, for your patience, and um, thank you. That, and that, was, that was actually comedy government work. That was wonderful. That was good. That was good. <laughs> that was on. Very, very well done, and, and we really appreciate you all coming out and, and putting this together. And Caroline, too, sorry for the confusion. And uh, hopefully the uh, the rest of this process will be smooth for other, everyone. <laughs> and I and, uh, appreciate the, uh, the, the, the Tenga uh, party. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right. All right. Yeah. With, with that, Eric. Everyone.
Um, well, I like. To, I really appreciate everybody like working with Jesse on this as well because he's been through the ringer on, on our side before we even made it this far. There was lots of documents lost and things that have happened leading up to this. We've been at this for almost a year now, so wow. I really appreciate you guys on this and getting it, getting it passed for him. Yeah. I can't wait for the housewarming party. We're all going to be there. <laughs> right. yeah. Let's not jump the gun. I think we, we may all be long in the tooth by then. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Thanks Thank you. Okay. All right. So, um, motion to adjourn the poll hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Aye. We're done with the poll hearing. Thank you, Caroline. <laughs> well, I'm glad that I am. It was wonderful to meet you. <laughs> Welcome to stay for the regular yeah, select board meeting. Oh, it only gets better from here. <laughs> 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 All right, thank you, everyone. Thank, thank you, you, Jesse. Have a great thank night. you, Jesse. Thank you so much, everybody. Bye. All right. See ya. <laughs> All right, well, the, all right, so as long as you all heard that it's not my It's time. in the minutes. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, you're going to be hearing me screaming from the yeah. Thompson Road. It, it's, it's different yep. than that. Okay. Yep. Yep. You can keep me on speed dial for that. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. All right. Well, thank you. Oh, okay. you can leave now, right? You can. Yeah, seriously. You, you, you are dismissed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool. I thought we'd talk to you. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Definitely. Thanks. Okay, right. thanks. Bye -bye. Nice to meet you. All right. Um, <clears throat> so with that, we're ready to start recording. <laughs> I'm exhausted already. Um, start record. Start recording. Start the recording for the select board meeting. All right. All right. We're going right into it. Welcome everybody to the Thursday, July sixth meeting of the. No, that was last week. July thirteenth. Seventeenth. Seventeenth. Monday, July seventeenth. All right. All right. <laughs> July seventeenth. Monday, of uh, Conway Select Board meeting. Call the meeting to order. And uh, Erica Goldman, select board member, is joining us by Zoom from whereabouts unknown. Um, vacation. Yes, vacation <laughs> whereabouts unknown. Good for you. Um, and um, so, first item on the agenda is the warrants. Um, there is. Can I? I came here, I just wanted to share something. Can I do that so I can leave? Sure. We'll skip ahead to guests, uh, to, to public comment. Thank you. Um, I appreciate that. Sure. I know you, Philip, and you're Veronica, right? Very neat. Very neat. I'm Very sorry, unique. I'm really... That's okay. I'm a sight reader, not a phonemic reader, so I have to say something over and over and over. And... Adam. Hi, Adam. Adam. Read. Okay, and you're... The, assist, the assistant to the town to the town administrator. Okay, great. Journey is the town So I wrote I wrote a letter that I'll read, and I brought three copies, and it looks like that's the right amount. So Philip can pass some around, and I don't expect anything from you tonight. It's just rather than throw a letter in the mail, I thought I'd come and address you directly. Um, and it's also easier for me to do this this way. So I'll skip the deer part. Town meeting this year was difficult. On that, I think many of us can agree. Having read the newsletter, it's reassuring you recognize this and are planning to work on a plan to move forward. However, it's reached the point where our town is starting to behave like the rest of the country. We are becoming very disrespectful and divided. What disturbed me most this year was not what happened at town meeting, but after. Some elected officials and some town staff fueled the anger and bitterness of voters that voters took away from town meeting. It's one thing to have a personal opinion, it's another thing to publicly throw people under the bus. The reaction to David Potter speaking up at town meeting is an example of being disrespectful about someone you would disagree with. David, his family, and his in-laws, the Winters, have spent hundreds of hours volunteering for this town long before any of you were hired or elected to Conway. And P.S. I voted for everybody who's on the board. That's not a personal. David's intelligent and knows equipment maintenance. Like many of us, he's frugal. 
He knows that equipment can be fixed if it's well maintained. He also knows when it's time to discard something and replace it. What makes me worried is that his right as a voter and taxpayer in Conway was sneered at because he took a risk to speak out at town meeting. He's blunt, to the point, but not disrespectful. I've listened to him every year. Um, what some elected officials said after town meeting about David spread like wildfire. It's gotten to the point where recently residents who don't even know him and who were not at town meeting think he is a stupid, horrible person. This is wrong, plain and simple. Then on the flip side are people who in the past have lied at town meeting, who have publicly and disrespectfully thrown volunteers by name under the bus. These people are held up as a public hero. Something's very wrong here. To be clear, I respect the work Ronnie Sweet does. The winter roads are as safe as New England roads can be, and I'm grateful. Ronnie also saves the town quite a bit of money, and I thank him for that. Where I will disagree is that his frequent requests for costly equipment is reasonable. I see it as a conflict between what the town needs and what the highway department wants. At some point, town officials in the highway department need to understand that raising taxes are pushing people out of town. I have heard from interested lower working class families that they can't afford to move here. These are people who would raise their children here. They might step up and serve on a committee or volunteer, the type of families we need in Conway. Taxes never go down. After the yearly increases on our tax bills, I'm sorry, often the yearly increases on our tax bills are what families spend on co-payments for pediatrician appointments. For many senior citizens, it's equivalent to what our co-payments are for prescription medication. These costs are needs. Much, but not all, of the road equipment requested is a want. I wish I could vote for every item Ronnie requests, but my family is on a fixed income. It's getting harder and harder to stay in Conway. That is why I often, I often do not vote for what the highway department requests. It has nothing to do with Ronnie or the services he provides. You know, and I'll add here, I've known Ronnie since before he's had children. You know, I've been here for a long time. What I also wish is that the select board would work to bridge Ronnie's skills with the knowledge that local committees bring to the table about caring for the land and the environment. Each year I express my concern about the mowing of town property and the school grounds. Each year I watch the highway staff weed whack important plants like milkweed. Instead of being angry with groups like the pollinator committee, there needs to be a respectful working relationship. This can only come to be if those who supervise town workers model and expect it. At this point, it might even take an outside mediator. We need to talk, we need to not only talk the talk, but walk the walk. Mediation is a very difficult skill and an ongoing task. I worry that very few of us have those abilities. Lastly, I respect and thank each of you for the many hours you dedicate to our town. It's not a job that I have the personality or the ability to do. My volunteer time is spent in other ways. My dedication to Conway is showing up at town meeting, voting at elections, volunteering at natural routes, offering my skills at the library, and speaking honestly with you about my concerns. In closing, I'm not looking for answers, but for each of you sitting here to collectively, collectively reflect on what can bring healing to our town. I'm gonna to tell you the chatter that's out there is bad. It's really bad. I've run, run into several people who go, oh, David Potter, da 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 da. I've run into people who have publicly heard elected town officials throw David under the bus. Not me. I'm not putting names in here. I didn't do, I did that on purpose. I don't wanna put names out there. I'm just telling you what's happening and it's really concerning to me. I, I wish that our other member, Chris Waldo, was here right now because he and Phyllis Crane from the um, Capital. 
capital improvements planning recently met with potters and, and discussed, you know, the equipment and maintenance and all of that. So, I mean, they definitely reached out. Right, there's that piece and then the other piece that we as people are pretty, can be pretty nasty. It's just part of the human existence. But when it happens publicly, it was really disturbing. Um, my husband heard some stuff firsthand and came home and he was just like, I can't believe that. You know, I can't believe that. David's been in this town forever. Whether you like him or not, every year he gets up, every year he's respectful, but he's pretty straightforward. You know, and the part about taxes, it is getting really hard to live in this town, and I am not going to vote in a lot of that equipment. I have been a New Englander since the Revolutionary War. So my family got a grant because my a relative was an officer, and I grew up in the town of Hoosick Tunnel. We didn't have any road equipment. We relied on Florida Mountain to plow our roads. We don't need the best and shiniest and brand new equipment. You know? I mean, I just can't keep voting in that equipment. And I think there's a lot of people who live at the lower end of the income in this town who feel the same. There's a real lack of socioeconomic diversity in this town. When I first moved to this town, I could afford to move here. I couldn't touch this town now. You know? So. When people speak up at town meeting and how they vote, part of it's reflected. There is still a population of us who live here who live on the edge financially. And it's getting harder and harder. And then when David speaks up, I really appreciate it. He's not a personal friend of mine, but he showed up once to work on one of our tractors, never charged a sedan, you know, and I see him to be a good, honest person. And to have him publicly thrown under the bus, even just a few days ago, I was talking about town meeting. Somebody went, David Potter? And I said, were you at town meeting? No. Do you know him? No. So that's what's happening out there, folks. I haven't heard that well, about David. I, I, and, but, I like him. Yeah, I, I just want to say that I really, um, I really appreciate, like, I mean, town meeting is one thing, but we have select board meetings every week and i so appreciate that you that this is the whole point of kind of like you know local town government like i would really absolutely appreciate that you come to a select board meeting that you feel comfortable to like share this i mean i this is this is kind of like why we all live together in small towns because because we can do this we can talk i mean we should be able to do this we should be able to talk to each other respectfully you know um, and so I just, I want to say that, like, full appreciation for you coming here and, and, and voicing this concern. Yeah, I, like I said, Ed, too, that kind of stuff bothered me a lot. I've been talking about taxes, I've been talking about the mowing of the lawns. Last year it was like watching my tax dollars fly out the lawn mowers when they mowed them. Every Friday, yeah. and they're dead, and it's dust and dirt coming out of those lawn mowers. That's my tax money and your tax money. That's a separate, there's like two separate things going on here mm -hmm. that kind of collide together yeah. because of these frequent requests for new equipment every year, you know? And I like Ronnie a lot, but in December I sat at that meeting and he mumbled, well, wait till you see what I come back for next meeting. And I sat there fuming. And then every time I look on the warrant and everything's approved, finance committee, select board, you got to start getting a pulse on people beyond, in this town, beyond the people who have $500,000 homes or what, you know, there's some of us who are really, really struggling. So that was and I, two purpose here. Yeah, it's, um, I mean, I've only been like in town government for, I don't know, like four years now. I've lived in this town for 25 years. And there is there is so much that I have learned about um, just about financing a town. I mean, it's really, it's super complicated and I totally get it because I'm the same way. Like, I mean, like yeah. my property taxes have increased incredibly 
since you know I first bought a house here. And yeah, my kids could probably not afford to buy a house here, but I've definitely learned a lot about it's. There's a lot that's not in our control, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and I just, I just again want to say that I appreciate that this is what local town government does. This is what democracy is. Is that you know, thank you for coming and like thank you for talking about these these things because this is what this is what we do you know listen to people and, and and everyone trying to do their best and i feel the same way about you know the sweets and the potters and i mean like everyone in this town loves this town <laughs> and that's why we're here right and um so that's anyway why, we like, anyhow that's why i want to come i'm lot looking for answers but i think that paid staff in this town and elected officials really need to start looking deeply because the pulse out there is not good. It really is starting to feel like what's happening in the rest of our country. You know, there's this division. There's always been a division. I kind of fall in the middle. I'm progressive in my politics, but I'm an old time New Englander and I get frugality. You know, um, and the pulse is the worst I've ever felt it. Even worse than the year we voted in the school, which was took us two town meetings, was really expensive, was really divisive, but the chatter afterwards was nothing like it is now. So something's happening, you know, and hopefully together with paid staff and elected officials and whoever, you can kind of, you have a year before next town meeting. Well. <laughs> We have one in December, a special town meeting. Oh, gosh. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I just I, I used to have to take, the, when, when it was on Monday nights, I worked in public school, so I also get the whole chatter. You cannot walk out of your classroom and throw a family under the bus, and it happens. It's mm -hmm. wrong. Mm -hmm. But I used to have to take the day after town meeting over because I had a town meeting hangover, you know? Yeah, yeah. We'd be there at midnight, and I couldn't do yeah. We all did. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyhow, be well, folks. Thank, Thank you, Karen. You very Thank much. you. Yeah, appreciate it. All right, let's approve those warrants, Phil. <laughs> yeah, um, there is um, payroll warrant thirty-four thousand two hundred and twenty-five dollars forty-five cents. Another payroll warrant, ninety thousand three hundred nine dollars and sixty six cents. That, that's the account payable. Yeah, that's, that's the account payable. payable. Where, where is the actual agenda? Here. Thanks. Um, yeah, the accounts payable was ninety thousand three hundred nine dollars sixty six cents. The payroll warrant. Um, $134,961.70. Accounts payable warrants, the amount of $124,197.35. Payroll deduction warrant, which is the first one that I read, um, is $34,225.45. Um, a lot of warrants, but we're, we're stacking these up a couple weeks at a time, so. Um, I don't know. I didn't have any questions about them, so I don't. I thought they were pretty routine. So. Yeah. Move to approve. Um, all in favor, aye. Or second, uh, and then all in favor, aye. Aye. And so it's unanimous. Meetings attended by oh, select hang board. On, I don't minutes. Think you did the minutes. Yeah. Sorry. Ah, yeah. The minutes. Vote to approve the minutes of July sixth. See those, Erica. Oh, oh yeah. No, those also look good. Yeah. So move to approve the minutes of July 6th. Second. All in favor? Aye. That's unanimous. Um, meetings attended by select board members. Got any meetings going on out there? No. <laughs> I'm on vacation. <laughs> ah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Had, had, had the Mass and Motion Working Group meeting last week. Um, what else did we have? I Numerous meetings with emergency management folks. Yes. Yeah, um, I was gonna say. And uh, <laughs> um, 
and fire department and police department and emergency management, uh, you know, the state, state folks, um, everybody dealing with the horrendous floods that um, really had a bad impact in this town. <clears throat> um, public comments we had already, unfinished business, no, new, um, new business, we already did the Ever Eversource poll hearing. We are discussing and voting to sign the order of taking for the estate of Mary Bay and Salvation Army Land Veroni. Are we are finally going to be able to do this. Nope. <laughs> We're going to have to table it. Um, I'm sorry. So we, I do actually have the order um, in my possession. It was emailed in today. However, there are an awful lot of sort of legal steps that have to happen, and yeah. there's only 30 days in which to do it. And because it's summertime and there's other vacations involved, Town Council requested that we put it off until somewhere around August 14th and sign it then, then we'll have the 30 days and we can get it all done. So if that's okay, we'll, we'll table right. it for tonight until uh, an August meeting. Right. <laughs> Sorry? I said I, I'm fine with that. I mean, okay. if that's what all we right. have to do. <laughs> all right, so we'll table, we'll, we'll table that item for till August 13th. Um, discuss and vote in Franklin County Solid Waste Management District MOU for third party transfer station inspection hazardous waste collection. We need to do this? Um, yes, please. So every year, um, the transfer station has to have a third party inspection every year. Janamine does this for an incredibly reduced price. And so, um, I mean, when I used to have to do this for uh, South Hadley, some of the other engineering firms were charging $1,500, $2,000 for this annual inspection. Um, so, yes, I highly recommend we sign that with um, Jan. And then, and then the inspector is Jan. Correct. Correct. And so can, can we, since it's a party, can, since it's an official party, can we make it more of a party, you know? <laughs> at the transfer station? Yes, if it's a third party inspection, can it be more of a party? You want a fourth party. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yes. Can there be something more fun associated with it since it's a party? Um, I don't know. I guess $175 sounds like a... It's amazingly... That sounds very reasonable. Yeah, yes. it's more than a good deal, trust me. It's really quite... Generous, and she does this for all her towns. And then the second one is um, every year there is a, a regional household hazardous waste collection sponsored by um, the Solid Waste District, and residents can sign up, and they go um, they go for free under the budget of the transfer station. So we do pay for it, but um, but she has to have the official memorandum for this. So. Um, oh, so I'm sorry. She's got 500 as our as our hazardous waste budget, but we have more than that in our in our budget line for that. Anyway, so yes, yes, please do sign this so that our residents well, how, can. So what is it? If it, if it why does it say 500? If it, well, that's our assessment that. from her for doing this. Because of how few people in town use it. But we it. also are a super site. I'm sorry. So I should have explained that. So because we take in hazardous material once a month, we're one of the three towns that does that for the district. The paints and stuff like that, that's why we have more in our budget. Sorry, I shouldn't have gotten everybody confused. So yes, <laughs> we do pay, but it's a great price and it allows our residents to take their hazardous materials and get them out of their homes. So I highly recommend both MOUs. Do you understand all that, Erica? I, I, yeah, I caught all of that. I um, moved that we signed this MOU with um, Solid, the Franklin County Solid Waste Management. All the paperwork that I looked at before that I don't have in front of me right now yeah. because. Two different MOUs. Yeah, there's, a, there's two different ones and you have to sign them both when you can. Right, so I will be back on, I can do that Monday morning, the All right. 24th. All right, unless Chris, if Chris gets to it first, then maybe. He won't have voted for it, so I don't know if he can. I think he can. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not yeah. a huge rush. We can yeah. do it with Eric right, good. signing. They say, they say it can wait for you, so good. Yeah. All right. So um, Erica made a motion. I'll second it. All in favor? 
Aye. Aye. It's unanimous for as do both memorandum to understand. Excellent. Um, <clears throat> and uh, okay, discussion of flood damage in town and the steps being taken for relief. Ronnie. <laughs> um, so let's see. Uh, <coughs> start off. Um, the lieutenant governor, um, along with um, a representative um, from MBA, the Massachusetts Department of Agricultural Resources, and um, Ann Gobi from, who's our new director of rural affairs, all were at Natural Roots last week. Um, I met with them and did the the ride around Natural Roots' garden to see all of the damage. I did um, call Representative um, Jim McGovern's office and spoke with some of their people and they're obviously doing everything they can to help as well. Um, and of course, Natalie, Representative Natalie Blay. Um, I just spoke today with, um, <coughs> I'm going to mispronounce her name, Elevko. Um, Betcha? Yeah. Poet? Um, no, Kristen. And she's at the governor's office, and she's our Western Mass um, representative, or you know. Anyway, so everybody's been contacting, and we're working as best we can. I've met with Mima now a couple of times. They were just in my office today, along with Ron. They've given us our paperwork to do the initial damage assessment, and Ron has sent in all kinds of photographs of all the damage on all the roads so we're starting to put that together on the spreadsheet we hope to have it for Mima by the end of the week i i can say it's not looking hugely hopeful for um fema because one of the things that kristen mentioned to me today is that not only do we have to declare an, an emergency but um, it is helpful if we request assistance from MEMA up front because then if they have requests from municipalities then they can open their operations center and then that qualifies to getting a federal disaster so um, declaration so Except we're learning all this but they don't really have anything that we that's useful to us when I mean well so I guess yeah. the point is if, if we can mobilize them then that can lead to other good things. It's I mean, I thought about it when I went out to Main Poland Road, and that is just like wrecked beyond belief. Yeah. Like I don't see how that that, that ever gets fixed. And could that have been something that we called MEMA on and brought more equipment to bear on it? And like, why? Yeah. You know, that this whole thing that it was the highway department there hours of days on end, and I still went out there. It looks completely wrecked still. Mm -hmm. Like I, I I gather they got some work done. They would have had to because they spent a lot of time doing it but like does it even make sense to open that road again and that is what the one resident that is seriously affected that one residence there with where there's like almost a mile in either direction down the road um uh, you know that that's the one resident in town that doesn't have that's not wired for comcast if you remember oh, and um but that th they're like we don't even think you should fix this road fix one end of it or the other so that we can get to our house. But it makes no sense to fix both ends of this road. Mm -hmm. the, the, just the amount of material cost is going to be staggering. And what are we doing? Mm -hmm. um, so who makes that determination? Is that like, yeah, like we that do. Well, so ultimately we do. Like we can direct this, this not be like fixed. That We can direct that we um, move, move towards an abandonment of town maintenance for a section of road. I don't know. It, we, I guess we should sit down and discuss how that would affect the school buses and the emergency vehicles and everything else, just like with the bridge closing. Right. But, like, you know, in things like that, shouldn't we have been requesting some, you know, like, I, and we don't ever hear that from our highway department that, like, hey, yeah. this is, like, too much for us. So I never, I don't think that's in their vocabulary. Um, so, so yeah, so like, like um, Chris was saying, we're all, we're, we're learning these lessons. The other thing, um, Oh, she just went out of my head. Uh, it'll come to me while we're talking about it. For yeah, so we're setting up the emergency center. Anyway, so Ron is Ron is going to have to be figuring out just the cost of like a gravel alone and how much equipment and time and all that kind of stuff that we need to to work on but. to get everything. 
And it's on us too to, to really have a better understanding of exactly what services MEMA could offer. Mm -hmm. um, and it's on our department heads to, to stand up and say, I need help. Mm -hmm. Well, we do have a new MEMA rep. I know. Which okay, well, I, I was not aware that that he was new for us and that you know. Yeah. So um, anyway, um, but yeah, I'm sure they're and they're more than willing to help. And basically, what they were letting us know is that we have to do the best we can to document both public and private. Um, they did mention there is a place in the spreadsheet for private damages. And I, I had one resident come in today to let me know about some damage. Um, I've had a couple of other email me, and I do have the article going out in the currents for the August edition, asking residents to get in touch with me and let me know, give me photographs if they can, tell me how much it's costing for their damage so that I can put this in the spreadsheet. Oh, that's what I wanted to say. This was a little strange, but you know, we had the storm on the 10th, and then we had another on the 16th. Yeah. And Ron's question to Mima was, well, okay, is this, you know, well, we had talked about it earlier, and they said those are two separate events as far as they're, you know, that it's all considered two separate events. And Ron was like, well, how do I say what damage, well, we hadn't, you know, he's just trying to get culverts open so the flooding doesn't need to be worse, but he hasn't had a chance to fix most of the roads, right? So they were really damaged on the 10th, and now they're even worse from the 16th, right. so they were like, yeah, well, just, you know, you do the best you can, but it's considered two separate events. You know, it's Tomorrow's not looking good. Oh, no. Tomorrow afternoon. And, you know, from what the fire department tells me, opening up a culvert can actually increase flooding. So, um, which is exactly what happened on Buck Baptist, Upper Baptist Hill Road to the stream in back of my house, going up to 116 opening up that culvert which flows into a broken clay pipe which then all sends the water to the surface which then goes to the stream which goes in the, my basement and was entering my basement at thousands of gallons per minute um, which is insane and like that can't be just my responsibility sorry like and, and I, I hope that Ron would have come by by now but he hasn't so, um, yeah, there's that. There's that. But, I mean, that, that's my story from the flood. When they're both of our fire department, big pumper trucks, plus their big portable pump, five total hoses that were five inches in diameter, working full steam, and for three hours, all they could do is keep level with the pump. And they were estimating they were pumping 4,000 gallons a minute. That's, like, that, that is so far above the normal in the past. Like, they, none of them could believe it. But, um, like, to hear them talking about maybe needing another truck from another town that what they had going was maybe not enough, like completely blew me away. Like, I don't, I don't even know what to say about that. But, um, so sometimes opening up the culverts is not the best of ideas when they go into a, a broken down infrastructure system like we have. And when the infrastructure was built in the 1880s, it like can't cope with climate change, it can't cope with modern heavy vehicles going over the roads that these things, clay pipes go under and they're, they turn brittle and they just bust up over time. It's, the river looks terrible. The South River Meadow is wrecked. All those trees that we all planted, oh my goodness. They got damaged? Yeah, Did they're not there to... anymore. Oh really? Yeah. Oh no, okay, we should get pictures of that too. Uh, and that was the what, $300,000 grant? Yeah, a lot of those trees are bye bye, and that um, all that environmental engineering got degraded and messed with. And, um, to see Bob's wife's memorial bench, like no longer now it's a memorial footstool. <laughs> it barely sticks up from the sill. And of course, natural roots was just awful. 
that was beyond my previous experience as well. And the laws that state that they can't sell that food and it looked pristine and beautiful. Like, and I get it, it was non-potable water. Sum submerged in non-potable water means you can't. Well, they did relax some of the, of the restrictions, MBAR did, so, um, but I'm not sure exactly how that or if that will affect natural roots because they got flooded the second time as well. So. Yes. And one of the things they had asked me about, and I haven't been able to find any source because it would be coming from private homes, but they wanted to know if there's any records of anything being released into the river. And unless it's from a public entity, we're not going to know. So there's no way for me to know that I can tell. Um, although somebody from um, Adrian Nunez from MMA is helping me try to figure out if there's some other way we can find out if anything was released into the river for their sakes. The only people working with anything like that is, you know, all those Eversource line transmission people with whatever they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, but I, they're all, I, I, you know, I don't know. Thought the, I thought the potatoes looked delicious and I was like, I'll take a big bushel of them, David. Yeah. No, you can't. If I give them to you, they might put me in jail. Well, flood watch well, tomorrow afternoon. I think especially given, you know, tonight's public comments, I just feel like, you know, we have an obligation as elected officials in this community to recognize um, that this is kind of like a new reality. Like, you know, these kinds of climate events are going to happen, and we're going to continue to have shittier roads. Um, we're going to continue to have unpredictable weather, but we all live in this town together, and we all love this town, and we all need to figure out a way, like a plan going forward for, you know, how we live here together, respect each other, and, um, you know, deal with these unpredictable events. And it, you know, unfortunately, like, the way that when you talk to MEMA and, you, you know, yeah, they want to know what the total private costs are because they're allowed under the law to add them to the public costs to try to get to a number that qualifies for, for you know, financial aid. But that financial aid would all be to the town, not for the private people. And they say, Oh, yeah, for, if it's private people, that's a private insurance matter. But you cannot get private insurance for basement in New England, uh, for flooding in basements in New England. I didn't know this because I thought my homeowner's insurance, I had paid extra for a flood protection rider. And I did not know that that is an exclusion for basements. And that even federal flood insurance, which is only available to people in a flood plain, has an exclusion for basements mm. and that there is currently no carriers in the United States that offer flood protection for basements and all of our houses have all of their infrastructure in basements <coughs> and um, it is not fair to bear the for, for residents to bear the burden of climate change in this way and that um, this is something I would like us to be able to take a look at like uh, you know, I was really lucky because, you know, my oil tanks were floating, my, my, hot, my water tanks were floating, my hot water tank was floating, my electric panel was submerged. Everything works except for the furnace and boiler, which is wrecked, ruined, gone forever, and the electric panel, which was replaced. But that's thousands of dollars and, you know, but, you know, already. But <clears throat> that's just nuts that, that, like, for any one resident that these combination of factors that are far outside your little property's border, um, you know, are, are, is for you to deal with, like alone, unsupported. Well, right, and, and then also, I mean, just like increasing property taxes, like, yeah. I mean, yeah, we want to be livable. We want, we want our town to be a place where yeah. people can do to move to and live in yeah. and, and, and can do that. You know, so, I mean, that's incumbent upon us, I believe, as, you know, people who work for or volunteer for the town. I mean, that's, you know, I, like, I don't have the answer. I just think that that's our job is to, is to keep, I don't know, like, bootstrapping and, you know, finding the solutions to these problems. 
And they're not really, like, there's not going to be a solution. Like, you know, we live in a, a time where it's, this is what's going to continue to be our reality. Um, but I just want to say again, I fucking love, sorry. <laughs> cool. <laughs> I just, I, but I, but I love the fact that this is a town where people can come and, like, you know, like, say these things at a, yeah. you know, town meeting or say these things at a select board meeting or just, like, you know, we're all in this together. And I have found that Conway is, like, the sweetest, scrappiest little town that I've ever known. And <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not giving up. Yeah. Yep. Not giving up either. Just need more flotation devices in my living room. <laughs> but all right. So items not anticipated. Anything, Bernie? Town administrator update. What do you got? Um, some notes, <laughs> which I will write up tomorrow for a proper report. Uh, Ron. And I are um, with GZA are working on Delavar still. We just got a couple of signatures for the NOI to do the work on some other people's property. So that's moving forward. Hopefully we'll be, and thankfully it looks like not too much was damaged from the flooding up on that project. Um, I mentioned everything with speaking with, you know, um, federal reps and, and MEMA. Um, I also happened to go to a, a webinar today on federal funding and on barriers to applying for federal grants and it was actually very interesting because everybody basically had the same problem and we're talking I was on with you know a mayor of Pittsfield and a bigger bigger city entities and it's it's still very similar the, it, the barriers to what we have but I did put in a plug with them to say um, and Linda Dunleavy from uh, Furcog backed me up to say, you know, it doesn't make any sense how they decide what our wealth is as a town and why we don't get um, any funding, say, from US, any grants from USDA. Um, so the bag stickers have arrived, and Adam has been um, amazing at popping them all into envelopes to get ready for our <laughs> September 1st start date for the. Um, uh, selling of the new car decals and giving out the stickers. We had a successful closed bid with only one bidder for zero off Ashfield Road. Oh good, I'm glad to hear. Yeah, yeah, so next steps will be um, uh, figuring out the actual process for transferring the property which is now owned by the town to, um, to uh, the successful bidder. And then I mentioned with the order of taking. So that's pretty much what I had for the last couple of weeks. And I will write it all up as a formal piece that I can post um, tomorrow. Oh, and I'm sorry. And I also did, just before this meeting, send back the reply to Devlin Selman about the public records request. So we're up to date on that as well, with a reduction. Really? Yes, with a $50 reduction, yes, so. I guess you can technically call that a reduction. <clears throat> all right. Well, Catch you all up. All right. I would like to draw, bring that particular matter to its mm -hmm. rightful conclusion. Sooner rather than later. All right, so we do have our next meeting. So you wanna talk about um, what, when we want the next, the next meeting will be a, an executive session closed to the public. You wanna talk about dates for that, Erica? Um, I can't do it on the 24th, I can do it on the 25th. That's the soonest I can do it, and that's fine. I don't know about Chris. Well, he's not here. I know. He doesn't so. get a vote. <laughs> he gets told when it is. I mean, it, anything's fine with me. It, 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 it for the 24th, so I'm assuming that, we, and I was going to be there on the 24th as well, but I turns out I cannot. Um, but I can do it the 25th. 25. Okay. 
All right, so our next meeting is an executive session close to the public, and that's going to be in the town offices. Back room and town offices. Back room and town offices. Um, that would be Tuesday, July 25 at 6 or when? That works for, that's fine for me, yeah. Bernie, I'm trying to get your attention. Yeah, no, that's yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you guys tell me. Well, <laughs> it's not fine if you can't make it. Um, all right, so that's Tuesday the 26th. At, and then the next regular select board meeting would be two weeks from today, which is July 31st. Um, at 6 p.m. here at the town hall. Oh, and I should mention that I didn't get it out today, but there is a line-to-line -line transfer request coming from Chief Bates um, for things that actually Chief Wimet had ordered in the last fiscal year. So we need to do a line-to-line -line transfer. So I'm going to be asking the Finance Committee if they can join us on the 31st for a joint meeting. And I'll send that out tomorrow. All right. All right. Very good. With that, um, motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. And